So you are getting started in your photography journey and you're thinking about diving into real estate photography. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go over five steps that you'll need to take in order to break into the field of real estate photography and start building a successful career. From investing in the right equipment and learning about real estate photography basics to building a portfolio and networking with potential clients, we'll cover everything you need to know to get started in real estate photography. So let's dive in. Step number one, invest in the right equipment. This consists of the following. First, a camera. Obviously, you don't have to spend a ton of money on this as the end product is mainly shown online and doesn't require a ton of resolution. An example of this would be a Canon M50. This is a great entry-level camera that comes in right around $600. You can always upgrade later once you've outgrown your camera. If you do decide though that at some point you wanna incorporate video into your business, you may wanna look at something a little more robust a couple of options out there are the Fuji X-T lineup. I actually shot on a Fuji for a very long time. It's a fantastic camera. Um, and also the Canon R series lineup. These are a little more expensive, but they will be cameras that you'll be able to grow into and have for a long, long time. Just do your homework. And the biggest factor is obviously gonna be your budget. So you'll wanna make sure that you don't overextend yourself when you're starting out. To go along with that camera, you're gonna to have to have a wide angle lens. Somewhere around 15 millimeters is a good focal length for most real estate photography work. You don't wanna go much wider than that because your image will start to distort. A zoom lens is a really good option if it's in your budget. I actually shoot on a 16 to 35 and it's nice to be able to zoom to find the right composition but I do mainly stick to my widest focal length and on that lens, it's a 16 millimeters and it's perfectly acceptable. You're also gonna wanna get a tripod. This is gonna ensure that there's no handheld camera shake in your photos and a good add-on to that tripod is gonna be a geared head. This is not totally necessary and something you could skip if you're just starting out and really tight on a budget. That being said, when you start down this path of becoming a real estate photographer, this is gonna be a piece of gear that you're gonna eventually wanna get. A geared head will allow you to make very small pan, tilt, and pitch adjustments to get that perfect composition and to ensure that your verticals are straight. You can do this with a standard tripod head, but it takes a lot longer and can be very cumbersome. The final thing you'll need in terms of gear is gonna be a computer and your editing software, such as Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. So that's it for gear. Step number two is learning the basics of photographing real estate. There are several different methods that are used by photographers when it comes to real estate and which one you use is really gonna depend upon your personal preference. The two main methods are HDR and Flambian. Now I could spend an enormous amount of time diving into how each one of these works and why you might wanna work with one over the other, uh, but for the sake of not making this video like hours long, I'm just gonna keep it simple by saying that HDR is the easiest method of shooting and it can give you pretty great results and Flambian is definitely a little bit harder to learn and it takes a little bit longer to shoot but the results are going to be somewhat better. I'm gonna put some links down below to a few videos that will guide you through the shoot and edit process for each of these techniques. I'll also link to a video that walks you through the best practices for shooting, some do's and some don'ts for framing up your photos. These aren't videos that I've made on this topic, they're just videos from other YouTubers that I think are super useful, and I think you're gonna get a lot of value from that, and they'll help you get to where you wanna go as quickly as possible. YouTube has a wealth of resources on shooting real estate, so I really encourage you to do a deep dive to grow your knowledge. As soon as you start getting an understanding of how to shoot, practice. Photograph your own place and edit the photos. You're gonna to wanna to do this several times and start really honing your skills. Something that might sound a little bit scary, but that you really should consider is to join a few forums related to real estate photography on Facebook and post your work. Make sure when you do post that you word your post properly so that people understand where you're coming from. You wanna say something like you're just starting out and you really need help figuring out how to improve. You should get feedback from some that will really be super valuable. Understanding though that social media can be a little bit rough because some people aren't the kindest you have to be a little bit thick skin and you know, be willing to have an open mind to the information that you are receiving. Something to remember is that you definitely don't have to be an amazing photographer to be successful in real estate photography, but being good enough and having great personality and a customer service mindset is more than enough to have a really thriving business. Step number three is building a portfolio and your website. Once you have the fundamentals in place and you are starting to feel even the slightest bit confident in your abilities, it's gonna be time to put together a portfolio. You can do this by taking photographs of your own home and also asking friends and family if you can photograph their homes. Obviously, the more well put together the house is, the better your portfolio is gonna look. 
Take the time to straighten up each room that you're photographing as much as possible. And then you're gonna wanna put these images online for prospective clients to see your work. You can find pretty affordable options out there. Places like Squarespace charge something, I think like $15 a month for like a, a complete website. Step number four, network and market yourself. Real estate agents are gonna be your target markets to start out. You can DM agents on social media like Instagram and Facebook, but also reach out to people in your own personal network. I actually started out by shooting properties for family friends who were realtors. I talked to anyone and everyone that I could. When I started out, I honestly, I offered a free shoot to anyone I reached out to just to get my foot in the door. Now, this is a bit of a hot topic. Obviously, there's gonna be people that will take advantage of this and they'll just use you for the one-time free shoot and then go back to the previous photographer, which is a huge bummer. But like myself at one time, if you're just starting out, you sort of have to bite the bullet a bit and shoot as much as humanly possible so that people can start finding out about you. If you don't feel comfortable offering a free shoot, and I understand that some people don't, you, you can try offering 50% discount on the first shoot. I've actually known people who have done both ways, where they've offered it for free or they've offered it for 50% off. To be honest, some were successful, others weren't successful at both ways. At the end of the day, it really is gonna come back to you, your quality of work, your personality, and your customer service. So whichever path you decide to take, just make sure that those things are as great as you can make them. And once you do start reaching out to prospective clients, you're also gonna wanna have a price sheet because they're gonna be asking you how much you charge. I strongly recommend that you take a look at your local competition online to see what they're charging and price yourself competitively. Do keep in mind though that you know all your expenses, like your gas, your travel time, the wear and tear in your car, equipment, insurance, taxes, all these things totally add up. So don't price yourself too low because it's not gonna be, end up being sustainable for you. Number five, expand your services. Once you've started making headway in the real estate photography market, it will be very important to expand. Real estate agents love a photographer who can be a one-stop shop. So here's a list of services you should keep in mind when growing your business. Real estate videos, virtual tours like Matterport, floor plans, and property websites. I started with real estate photography, but over time I found that my real estate videos or would actually make me a, a valued commodity to my clients and a big reason why clients hire me on an ongoing regular basis. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions about anything covered here or you like the video, please leave a comment below and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in learning more about real estate videos, be sure to check out this video. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.